does keep moving, it can be a damn cruel place. But those moments of stillness. Hi, Paul. I'm Kit Bowen with Screen Picks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, this movie was just tremendous. Uh, I was I was so moved by it, but also, you know, learned something. I, I loved learning about something that I don't know anything about. And this was just such an eye opener for me. Um, how did you become involved in it? Well, you know, uh, I've been acting out in L.A. for 30 years. Uh, and uh, as a, the bartender, the homeless guy, you know, the day player, that's right. but I've been doing 99 seat theater. Uh, that's been my bread and butter. But my agent uh, got the script. I read it. I cried. But the thing about it was so amazing is that it was an Iraq war veteran in the movie, in the script. And I'm a Vietnam war veteran. So I thought to myself, this is crazy because uh, there's so much of me in this role. I couldn't have written it better. And which I, I had been writing a role for myself for the last 15 years, like every other actor in this freaking town. But all of a sudden this guy writes this thing. So uh, amazing, the addiction, that's my experience. The war, the loss, being with deaf people, working in, within communities with uh, uh, interpreting as an interpreter in, in silver houses, uh, this whole, cra it's so crazy, it's too close to me. <laughs> Well, I mean, but it's a beautiful story and, and you know, and you're such a such a pivotal part in it, you know. Um, I was just talking to Darius. I think your what your speech about finding the stillness was was my favorite speech of the whole film. I mean, right. is that something that you've learned to find or well no, I have, but it's but like Joe, it took me many, many years uh of uh, disappointment and loss and grieving uh about what could have been and should have been. Uh, until finally I really learned how to meditate and go within and uh, get that stillness that I kind of envy now. My father had that stillness and my mother who was lost to hearing at the age of five never really had it. She was always um, still remembering music. Uh, as I say in the movie, that's an ad lib line when I tell him uh, I still remember the music I was listening to before the bomb went off. That's, that's right out of my mother's uh, uh, story, which she would tell me she still remembered music. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty close. <laughs> well, my daughter, um, she's 21. She, uh, as as her language requirement, she took ASL and she absolutely loves it. Good for her. Great. <laughs> when I was in college, I, they didn't offer ASL, but what a great thing. If they did, I could have just aced everything because it's my first language. Instead, I had to do Spanish. Yeah, they probably wouldn't let you do that. They'd probably make you take Spanish. Probably, or you probably wouldn't let you. Yeah, but, but yeah, I think it's, it's great that they offer it as a as a you know as another language because it really it really is. So Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. It has its um, own structure. It has its own grammar, its syntax, everything. Yeah. So what's up next for you after this? Well, I'm just in a, a Black Sabbath tribute band out here in LA. We do, we do the whole thing in sign language. Sign language. All the bars are closed, so we're not working right now. So that um, we're still rehearsing. I'm still working on that, and I'm just waiting to see what happens next. I, as I say, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm up for doing any more day player roles. <laughs> well, I don't know. After this, I'm not sure that'll. You might. You, this might be it. You know, you might be getting up there and uh, and proving to everyone and whatnot. Yeah. But um, I'm one last thing. I just want. I, what What do you hope people will take away from this movie when they well, watch it? I hope that they see. Uh, that deaf culture and deaf people are not a monolith. They're all, they're so different and diverse that there are deaf doctors, lawyers. Uh, there are deaf people that, oh my goodness, they have addictions. They, you know, they, uh, they're, they're just like us and they need a shot. Hollywood has to be better at portraying them in the movies. Uh, no more of this Julianne Moore and Wonderstruck. Uh, you know, there are a lot of deaf actors that, that are way talented that they could have cast in there. But I understand you got to use a name or I know, I know how it works. Believe me, yeah. I know how it works. But deaf people, deaf people need a shot here at being portrayed correctly. Right. Uh, so, you know, well, I, I, hope that... time to talk. I could go on a whole tangent with you, but anyway. <laughs> I know. Well, Riz did do a good job, but yes, I understand exactly what you're talking about for oh. sure. <laughs> oh. 
Well, thanks again for, for talking with me. And, you know, hopefully we can meet in, in person at some point. So I'll keep I'll keep track of your uh, of where you're playing and stuff. And maybe we'll... in L.A. Yeah, I live in L.A. Yeah. Oh, please. The band is Hands of Doom. OK. Play heavy metal bars. There'll be a lot of deaf people there. I can guarantee you that. So, yeah. Is it OK it's, if I wear plugs? <laughs> I, ha I bring plugs for you. I have them in my bag. Awesome. <laughs> I don't want you to end up like Riz. <laughs> this. Mundane world suddenly.